Well, it's all over, ladies and gentlemen. The, the escalation and tensions in Moscow. This was the weakest smokes and mirrors coup ever since what happened in Turkey with Erdogan recently. All right, so what's going on here? Um, I, I, I actually scheduled it for 6.40 p.m., but I thought let's just go live now. We've got everything confirmed. Um, so what we now hear is that Prigozhin and his Wagner Group mercenaries have decided to surrender and de-escalate the tensions. And this happened, uh, according to uh, Prigozhin himself, he's actually also confirmed this in, in, in the latest audio message. He has said that so that I'm stopping this so that Russian blood is not spilled. We return our columns uh, and return to the field camps. So, where we are hearing that uh, Belarus and the leadership in Belarus uh, have decided to broker a deal between Prigozhin and Putin. And as I said before, I had a feeling this would be the outcome, mainly because uh, of everything that we've heard uh, well throughout history, but also recent times. Uh, what was he actually thinking? What was he trying to achieve? Because it was always going to be difficult. Firstly, the guy who's <laughs> claiming to be this alpha male figure and he's got nothing to lose and he's the true Russian nationalist and all that, he's clearly fearful for his life. I don't think he cares about Russian blood, really. Um, considering uh, that what's actually uh, what he's done in recent times to even ordinary Russian people, not just Ukrainians, but also Russians. So this has now been confirmed initially by Belarus, but also now by Prigozhin himself. And the, there was a deal that was made between uh, him and uh, Kremlin, and uh, Belarus uh, was the one brokering it. But interestingly enough, just before this came out, we had, for example, uh, and this news uh, that was also confirmed uh, that uh, the the crazies in Belarus, the revolutionaries, let's just say, the pro-coup people in Belarus uh, got excited about what was happening in Russia. So they also stated their intentions, the uh, uh, Kalinuskis, uh, that uh, they want to, this is the regiment that was against the establishment. They stated their intentions to return to Belarus to overthrow uh, Lukashenko, the leader of Belarus. Um, so, interesting enough that when this came out, shortly after, Belarus decided to get involved and say, okay, Prigozhin and Putin, can you just calm down? But this is exactly, but this is what we are seeing on the surface, obviously. We don't exactly know the details behind it. A, a lot of it is smokes and mirrors. We know that. Smokes and mirrors, left, right and center. But uh, this is what publicly they are telling the world. Kremlin and Belarus. Uh, so they are suggesting that because of this, Belarus got worried and Lukashenko, so he got involved and said, well, let's do it. But again, everything that comes from Kremlin or even Ukraine is full of fake, fake news. So everything, pinch of salt. The only things we can fully report is what actually happens, what is actually happening rather than what they say. So the de-escalation is now happening. Uh, the, uh, the, the Wagner group decided to go back um, to their bases, um, considering that only about half an hour ago, an hour ago, uh, they were getting very excited. Uh, so firstly, we had this news that the Chechens uh, were coming in to Rostov initially uh, to start um, challenging the Wagner group. Then the Wagner group were boasting about uh, the fact that they brought down another, well, six planes, so seven planes, seven Russian jets and helicopters. Uh, were brought down by the Wagner Group. They were they were very excited about this. They were, again, this is what they were showing us, the world. Uh, it, it makes you think about because we we did say last night when we talked about it initially. It said, well, we know that they they have this um, mentality over there. Uh, we we've done the same thing in the in the Second uh, World War with with the Germans. The you know you create a scenario where you want people to think one thing, but it's all completely fake. In terms as a scenario orchestrated, so whether it was fully orchestrated or it got out of hand, it got out of hand, and the deal is real, and the as in they had to make a deal. I think this is uh, not going to end too well for Prigozhin because uh, they want us to believe that well, they made a deal. He's going to now just go back to his bases, and Putin is going to forgive him. You're considering they brought down a number of uh, helicopters and planes, according to both sides. 
I don't think Putin is that forgiven because he has to set an example. Um, because <laughs> you can't just be like, shake hands and uh, go, go back to Ukraine and fight alongside the Russian army. Um, I feel, feel like uh, at some point, uh, Prigozhin is going to go into a building and walk uh, alongside a, an open window and the floor might be slippery and it might accidentally fall out of the window. So we'll see what happens to this guy because I think this is the end. But they are saying that this is the de-escalation for the moment. I think it's over, <laughs> Prigozhin. I think I don't. Also, this guy. I don't understand why over the last few hours a lot of people got excited and decided to um, praise him or get excited that he's some sort of a champion of the people or hero. Firstly, the guy's a psychopath. And he was literally chosen by Putin because he's a psychopath. He's an animal. And his forces, they, were, they had a lot of ex-convicts and well, actual criminals um, who, who were just crazy. So he, he wasn't really going to come take over from Putin and reform Russia into some sort of liberal democratic society. <laughs> that was never going to happen. I, I do not, I would not trust the, the nuke button, the red button in the hands of these guys. I mean, not, not that you trust it with anybody. But did, really, this guy? So, uh, let's see what you guys are saying. Kevin says, oh, this is a big comment. Let's bring it up. Wagner knows, uh, well, the Wagner group knows, uh, I think the Wagner boss, yeah, Prigozhin knows he is a marked man. Makes no sense in giving up. I mean, yeah, I mean, the whole thing um, made no sense. That's why I said from the beginning, pinch of salt, spokes and mirrors. Uh, Roman says, RIP, rest in peace, psychopath. <laughs> Yeah, uh, what else? Uh, John Donson says uh, Prigozhin can still be useful, though. D to be fair, if it wasn't orchestrated, hypothetically, it has still undermined the leadership and it has still um, they, they, they completely destroyed the stability of the Russian forces in Ukraine because um, a Kremlin reported, again, whatever Kremlin says, you have to, well, to be careful about it, Kremlin reported that they are they brought back a number of a huge number of their soldiers from Ukraine to Moscow to challenge him a few hours ago. That means that Zelensky and NATO could just go in and take over those areas for now. But then um, Prigozhin says he's taking his mercenaries back to the field and bases. So he hasn't actually clarified if he's taking them back to Ukraine or to the original bases uh, in the south of Rostov and other places in in the actual Russia uh, in Russia. So. We don't know. Keith says that the UK government better get a Cobra meeting on the go because the UK are complicit in the coup. The UK Parliament are WFS heads. Uh, the Cobra meeting uh, actually did happen earlier uh, with James Cleverly. Uh, that already occurred. I'm not really sure. We're not going to know exactly what they discussed. Uh, so that's quite interesting to know if it ever comes out. Um, Patricia says, better the devil you know. As I said, this guy would have been <laughs> slightly problematic if he somehow got into power. Um, but again, for the record, they are the their official line from the Wagner Group is we are currently de-escalating from now. But my instinct says he, he's done. Uh, he's done. And, he, and they say that this deal means that he's going to survive. He's going to go back and follow the orders. I don't think Putin could or should be forgiven, really. She should... Um, for the sake of his own Kremlin stability, he should set an example by throwing him out the window. <sighs> well, Thomas believes that Putin wouldn't dare. He's petrified of NATO. I do like this channel. Uh, we do actually uh, get a diverse uh, a range of uh, different opinions rather than other echo chambers. So, And I do, I do like it. You guys clash with, your, with each other on the, <laughs> in the live chat sometimes. Uh, but it's good because it actually helps also all of us with critical thinking um, to hear all sides. <clears throat> Ian says uh, China, Iran and India will see this as a weak Putin. I, I could see that, but um, I don't think uh, Iran or the Iranian regime um, wouldn't really bother much because they, 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 they've also been weakened over the last year by their own people. They, they're uprising against them. So I don't think if I were the Iranian regime, I could just be like, hey, Russia, you got weak. Ha! Well, you can't talk because you're also weak. And the instability in Iran is much worse than Russia right now. So I don't think Iran could talk when it comes to the, um, 
the leadership in Russia being weak. Uh, DA says that who's funding the Wagner Group? Well, according to Putin, it's Putin and Kremlin so far. Uh, unless, uh, again, if this wasn't orchestrated, the other theory could be that uh, this was, uh, he was approached by someone, NATO or CIA or someone. There are also those theories. We don't have the confirmation uh, when it comes to that. Um, but of course, there are a lot of uh, scenarios that could have happened behind the scenes. Uh, right. So yeah, um, a lot of people are saying UK, EU, keep keep out and all that. A lot of people are obviously afraid in the West that uh, if we intervene too much, then uh, we will be in danger. So a lot of the sentiments that come uh, against the whole Ukraine operation and the NATO alliance and all this is mostly because people don't want us to get involved. People here. And they're just afraid that we will just be the pawns in this whole game and they will be under attack and it will be just completely chaotic. Uh, so, um, <clears throat> Troy says, I uh, honestly, why doesn't Putin just call out America's Epstein issue uh, three years and we've uh, all just gone? Oh, well. I mean, there's also a lot of things because, you know, when it comes to the, the globalist establishment, there's so many things that have been leaked or theories. Uh, and one would wonder. Why is it that someone like Putin, if these are true, why hasn't he leaked anything? Why hasn't he come out to, because he wants to destroy the NATO side, he wants to fight back against them, he wants to undermine them, right? He, he could have, um, if he knows things, he, he could easily, and he, shouldn't, he clearly knows certain things. Uh, he could have uh, exposed uh, a lot of things about uh, the Western side, but it uh, hasn't really happened. Uh, this contra contradicts what is being said by a reporter who says Wagner took control of two sites in Russian cities and are marching to Moscow and are not far away now. This was 18 minutes ago live from Moscow. No, because this has now been confirmed by both Kremlin, um, uh, Kremlin, Belarus and Prigozhin himself. Prigozhin just released an audio tape, which I can't download for some idiotic reason, but it is actually on Telegram if you want to check it out. And they have just, well, just, what is it? 15 minutes ago, um, the, the Wagner group have confirmed that they are withdrawing, they are de-escalating, and Belarus confirmed. Belarus says that they were the ones uh, who brokered the deal between Rogozhin and Putin. So this has been confirmed. Obviously, those who say you hear something on Twitter or Telegram or whatever, there are people saying things all over the place, and doesn't mean everything is true. Um, even if it's from someone that you like usually, even if it's like an independent media reporter or journalist that usually you like, they can still give out fake news. So you have to be careful about, uh, you question everything and everyone, including yourselves and me as well. Double check, even whatever I say, just double check. I might even make mistakes, you never know. And I try to correct it at some point. <laughs> okay, so. Uh, what else do we have? Uh, Oh yeah, this is the comment in response to what I said. Uh, Putin has already called out the satanic cabal of the West, but these were these were just comments. You know, he's made speeches saying, "Oh, the world, the world, the, the West is going woke and all this." Now I'm talking about actual uh, Julian Assange style expose, and um, so the actual deep secrets that you know even Trump would know. Assange did um, well knew, and clearly people like Putin, President Xi, these guys know as well. They, they haven't exposed those things. I believe this could also be part of the, the, the deterrence that we have between East and West. It's not just the nuclear stuff. It's also sensitive information because uh, they believe but all sides, everything is dirty when it comes to conflicts um, and even cold wars, which we are under. Um, everything is about, well, if, if, if Putin exposes something very, very important or sensitive, then maybe we have something on him. Um, these things always happen even in the, in the 80s, 70s and 80s. <clears throat> One perfect example is actually about the moon landing. The theories about moon landing being faked. Um, the Russians uh, it clearly could have uh, known or found a way to know, uh, but uh, they didn't expose anything either. So this is just part of the, the mind games between all sides when it comes to these things. Uh, if you like Russia, you have bad taste. Um, yes, another comment. Uh, yeah, they, there's a massive, massive debate in the live chat. Uh, they got pro-Russia, anti-Russia, pro-Ukraine, anti-Russia, and I think the majority of us just neutral, um, and uh, they go with nuance. I uh, personally, I go with nuance. I don't. I'm against all establishments. Uh, it's fascinating how some people who call themselves anti-establishments they end up supporting a different establishment. 
I, I, <laughs> I criticize the NATO the same way I would criticize the Kremlin or Beijing or Tehran. So um, that's the best way to go about in life. Just question everything and everyone. Just because uh, Biden is um, terrible doesn't mean President Xi is an angel. So, but sometimes people make that mistake. All sides, they would say Putin is terrible. So Zelensky is an angel. Are you kidding me with this? Or vice versa. Zelensky is a midget, corrupt midget. So Putin is an angel. It doesn't really work that way. They're all as bad as each other. They all have their own agenda, and it's the establishment doing establishment stuff. Um, but it is funny how the American side, uh, kind of recent times, come out to pretend that they are the compassionate uh, humanitarians. <laughs> Have we seen the history of the American interventions in the 20th century? Even, for example, what they've done in Iran in the 20th century, with coups and all this, and what they've done across the world. And now that somehow when they went into Libya or Iraq, like, we, we are the liberators. Shut up. <laughs> Absolutely shut up. We have to promote Western values, the values that make us, but I don't think it's best to um, do it by coercion. Those days are gone. So that's the problem I have with Western interventions or Eastern interventions. That's not, it's the same thing. Yeah, AJ Brown is like me. I am anti all government. Freedom. <laughs> we're not anarchists, for the record. Those of you watching this, like, what does that mean? We're not anarchists. We're just pro freedom. Skeptical about uh, big governments. Uh, yeah, see, I got more supporters here. DJ Emo, Emo says, uh, no governments uh, are angels, let's be real. Absolutely spot on. See, all the fanboys of Zelensky and Putin, President Xi and Biden, listen, your leaders are not perfect people. John, John says, I thought this was uh, fake. Um, I don't know if this refers to the latest update or the whole thing. Um, to be fair, I've been vindicated. Last night when I reported this first, because the mainstream media were behind us as usual, a lot of people in the live chat were coming out and saying, nothing's happening, the, the, the guy doesn't even exist, nothing, nothing is real, and Putin is saying everything's fine, but he didn't. Um, so I was, at least I was vindicated that something was happening. Even if it was orchestrated, even if it was smoke and mirrors, it was, uh, it was happening. It, and yes, I was right. <laughs> so... Um, but yeah, always be careful how you report things. That's the that's the whole issue. Um, Stephen believes uh, that uh, Putin's uh, turmoil isn't over yet. I've heard Antifa are on their way. I believe Antifa and Greta Thunberg are on their way with the uh, pride flags, and I believe that Putin is about to surrender to Greta Thunberg. Uh, <laughs> that was a good comment, Laurie. Welcome back to live chat. One of our regulars. Laurie says that uh, you are so right about them all had uh, all uh, bad points to them. To me, Putin is just protecting his country and his people, unlike what our government is doing. I just hope that this whole thing finishes soon. Thank you for your comment. Uh, all right, I'm just going to confirm something um, to make sure everything is actually up to date. Uh, I don't want to end live stream and start another one. That would just chaotic. Um, hang on. Uh, No, no, the, the latest is from Belarus, it's the same thing. Um, okay, now, we have confirmation that the, from Kremlin and Ukraine, yes, Ukraine have also confirmed, that uh, the Ukrainian army have now officially launched an offensive in Kherson, or Kherson as they would say here, Kherson, uh, Kherson region, and the east side, uh, the eastern side. So they are taking advantage of the, the Russian forces uh, abandoning the area. So the, the Ukrainians are trying to take back control of that. Uh, to be fair, I believe that now we've got the Russians uh, on, on their way back to Kherson, uh, at least over the next few hours. So it's going to be a bit of a battle situation uh, in the eastern side of uh, Ukraine as well. Um, and it's going to be quite interesting because obviously if, uh, if the Russians manage to take back control of Kherson, then it just completely negates the whole thing because they abandon an area Ukrainians try to take back control and then they could just come back and take it back that would be embarrassing uh, considering Ukraine have everybody behind them NATO and all the money and all the weapons so technically on paper if Ukraine is doing an offensive in Kherson they should be able to completely take over and protect it so we'll see how the next day or two go in that region and in this eastern side in general anyway uh, i'll keep you guys posted with everything else that happens as usual on this channel we will be ahead of the mainstream media as expected i'm maya tusi and we are the media